victory that we saw in the big match against Crystal Palace. The fear that it was Achilles' tendon trouble happily was unfounded. So here then is the Charlton side. They come to this game without Dick Tideman in midfield. He's got a groin injury. Could well be that Charlton will miss his fine passing game. Their best known player, of course, is Mike Flanagan, the England B player. Nine goals for him this season. Fulham remain right up amongst the leaders. The return of Gordon Davis is a help. He'll be up front with uh, Chris Guthrie and Brian Greenaway. Though the defence will surely remember still that they, like Charlton, conceded five goals last Saturday in a 3-5 defeat at Burnley. The referee today, it's Clive Thomas from Fourth Call in Wales, the second successive week that he's featured on the big match. And this Charlton crowd, starved of success here at the Valley, Charlton have won only twice at home this season. By the way, that uh, dismal record is not reflected by the empty terraces there. That section is closed off while Charlton build a roof behind the goal. So where we go then. Fulham in white shirts, kicking off and attacking the goal to our right. Charlton in their familiar red shirts with white shorts. Charlton, in fact, uh, mentioning that dismal home record of theirs, they've lost their last three at home. And running only two, the two of the clubs they've beaten here, Bristol Rovers and Newcastle. A free kick to Fulham. Ray Evans with it. Floated in there a bit short, and uh, Davis just over that crossbar. And the Charlton marking absolutely non existence there. The free kick by Ray Evans, and just look at the space that Gordon Davis had hooking the ball though over the Charlton crossbar. This is Campbell, now Madden, played in for Steve Grit. Madden again. Laurie Madden's ball, for, not forward, nicely there. Flanagan looking it back. Grizzly knocking it in again for Flanagan, taking it towards the byline. Back it goes again, and it was Les Strong who got it away when it looked to be nicely falling into the path of Terry Grizzly. So Mike Flanagan very nearly setting up a goal there for Charlton. Les Strong's intervention saving Fulham. The corner then for Charlton, which Keith Peacock will take. Hit in towards the near post there. And Barry was right in there, but uh, it just floated over his head. So another corner for Fulham. Again, Brian Greenaway will take it. Jeff Wood wanting a bit of marking done in that uh, Charlton penalty area. And Evans crossing this one again deep there. Peacock trying to get his header in, but in fact it was Tony Gale. And clearly, uh, Charlton were very nearly caught out there. A long, long corner. And young Tony Gale beating Keith Peacock in the air as he should. But mine with the header. Jeff Wood with the kick. Grit with the header going straight to Ray Evans. Already one or two chances have been developed at both ends. The suggestion of goals in this game already. Beck. Almost caught from behind by Grit going on. It'll come to Guthrie, played back for Les Strong. Evanson's away on the left. This is Guthrie again on the ball. And taken out of it well by Shipley and Fairley. Madden, the long pass forward, and Flanagan's after it. Peyton out quickly. Now can set up something for Fulham. A nice touch by Flanagan. Played in for Robinson, and he's trying to get it back again for Flanagan. But a beautiful little bit of play there by Mike Flanagan. A lovely touch back to Marty Robinson. Now Gale. A bit of acceleration taking him clear of Robinson. And then I think maybe it was Beck who got in his way. But it's John Beck now with a nice ball played into Guthrie. Guthrie might get something on the turn here. And it might be Davis. And twice Charlton somehow got it away. Strong playing it in. Safely catching it. And a throw out now for Madden. We'll have to look at that Charlton escape in a moment. Madden playing it uh, through there towards Peacock. It's a free kick to Charlton. And while they're setting it up, let's have a look at that uh, Charlton escape when Guthrie was able to turn and hit it. The ball hitting Jeff Wood on the outstretched foot. And then when the next shot came raining in, Charlton getting in the way to block it. Free kick.
Peacock with it. Flanagan's header! Oh, and a beautiful save there. Robinson trying to turn it back again. What a brilliant piece of play by Charlton when Peacock took that free kick. Flanagan was alive to it before anybody else, got a beautiful header in, but what a superb piece of keeping by Jerry Payton. He pushed it up onto the crossbar. I thought, if anything, it might bounce back in, but it was Fulham's day and it kept out, and Robinson couldn't do anything with the rebound. Money. Guthrie chesting it down well for Beck. Strong again, making one of those surging runs down the left for Fulham. Evanson calling for it and getting it. The cross coming in there, and uh, Campbell getting it away, but only as far as Dale. And Fulham really uh, attacking and uh, showing a lot of emphasis on their attack, getting all sorts of pe people forward. Now, Gale, a nice pass this for Evans on the right-hand side. A good cross towards Guthrie. Again, an example of how they got uh, back men up. Strong was involved, and eventually it came to Evans, and that was a good floated cross by him, and it was Guthrie at the far side with the powerful header that was too what, too high. And half an hour gone with no score, which must be a novel experience for these two sides, although, of course, Fulham played a goalless draw against West Ham in midweek, but... I think that last Saturday afternoon they were involved in games that produced 18 goals. A 5-5 for Charlton at Bristol and a 3-5 for Fulham at Burnley. A good ball played by Peacock. Now here we are with Flanagan, but he hit it straight at Locke, and Locke had no trouble at all there. Just belting it away. This time to find Gordon Davis. Turning well, finding Evans. Changing the point of it to Evanson on the far side. Crossed in once more towards Guthrie, and uh, Shipley really with his hands full against Guthrie. In the air at any rate. Flanagan releasing Robinson. Peacock galloping forward again. There he is there, nodding it back well for Madden, and down goes Peyton once again. Well, Madden made that final shot, but uh, really the credit goes to Keith Peacock. I mean, he still plays as though he's an enthusiastic apprentice, and uh, he got him well and nodded that one back, almost into the path, conveniently, of Laurie Madden. It's now with Evans. Davis, nicely into the path of Guthrie. Try to find Beck, and it will be there strong, and a brilliant save by Wood. Those Fulham defenders coming forward and Fulham are playing more like a home side at the moment than Charlton are and this time Beck was pouncing on that ball the short pass there and Les Strong let go a tremendous shot and what a save it was by Jeff Wood a corner then for Fulham there is Hedder getting it away played wide again for Evans deeper one this time this is going to test Jeff Wood but he's a big fella and he got up well he turned in for Peacock beautifully played on again for Flanagan but uh, well Liz Strong is back there again for Fulham well, it was a prize of something there as uh, Peacock and Flanagan combined well but it's Peacock with the throw for Charlton and not a lot of support for him Flanagan now coming towards him Mike Flanagan it's a good ball there, played for Peter Shaw, and charged down by Tony Gale. Madden, kept in for Shipley. Played in for Robinson. Brisley turning it back, I don't think it'll quite get to Peacock. But Robinson's right there again, Peacock's right in the thick of it once more. And he's got a good cross in towards Mike Flanagan. been an impossible angle. Peacock full of good things again on the far side, and the cross coming in, Flanagan getting up, but not really getting a proper touch on it. And he looked uh, dead and lost as far as uh, Steve Grip was concerned, but somehow he turned it back, 
and that wasn't very far away. And I dare say it's warmer up there than it is down here. What a view. It's worth a season ticket to know anybody, I should think, uh, in any of those flats. Space and then trying to get the curler beyond the reach of Jerry Payton, but uh, Payton's a big fellow and uh, just managed to get up and grab it. Guthrie, Evanson, Peacock battling away once more. Unreal, all of that. It's almost impossible to describe it again, but just look now. As Flanagan, in, first of all, got that uh, Fulham defence in all sorts of trouble with that uh, hard low cross. It looked as though a goal must come. And again. And Fulham were in trouble for a long, long time. Until in the end, it's Madden who hits it over. Beck. Evans outside him. Beck playing it into Greenaway. And a deflection off a Charlton defender for the corner into a winning run at home and Bobby Campbell's Fulham have held them to a goalless draw and I would think he'd be fairly pleased with that and in fairness it's uh, one a point that Fulham deserved they battled well and they attacked well more than you normally expect to see from an away side in fact as I said at half time they look more like the home side often than uh, Charlton did just two good chances and two good saves in the first half and that amazing skirmishing around the Fulham goal now for a few seconds in the second half but overall a very disappointing game that finishes with a blank scoreline here at the Valley Charlton nil Fulham nil well it really would have been interesting to have known what the odds were on a goalless draw there yesterday after all those goals that both sides were involved in the previous week but that was just our bad luck and bad luck of course for the fans as well Mike Flanagan was superb for Charlton I thought Fulham confirmed to me that they are a well enough organised side to keep well in the race for some time yet. But I wondered too what the verdict of the Charlton manager Andy Nelson was. After all, they've won only two at home all season. And he has been critical of his team in the past. Well, uh, when you consider our record at home this year and the very poor way that we have played, in fact, I was quite pleased today. I thought that we did enough to have won and uh, uh, quite relieved that we didn't throw it away at the finish. Um, but very, very pleased with the commitment anyway. Really? Which, what, do you feel hadn't quite been there in the last few weeks? Well, I'm certain it hasn't been. You, you know, uh, I think that w the tendency has been that, that uh, we thought following a good away performance again, which we've had all season, or we only have to put our shirts on and go out and play, and it will happen. Mm. But, uh, you know, you know football well enough to know that, that this doesn't, uh, doesn't occur. You've got to do it for yourself each time you play. Uh, we've had some terrible performances out here, and uh, probably last Tuesday was the worst of the lot. Do you think it's become a mental thing with them now, that they, this long jinx at home? Uh, I think it has. Uh, you know, they're very nervous before the start of the game, and it's difficult to relax. And uh, the tendency is that if you are nervous, that any tiny little thing that goes wrong, it, it becomes too important. You know, if... Uh, if the opponents have half a chance of getting a goal and miss it, then we're suddenly all nervous and we can't relax and can't get over it quick enough. But I'm sure it'll change, right? Yes. But the crowd, in fact, were, were, were good and they were behind you for a long period in the... Uh, I mean, they're not disenchanted yet. No, I think the, the crowd here um, are probably as kind as anywhere in the country. They rarely get on to the players. Uh, they rarely get on to anybody. Perhaps it, it may well be that if they started to, to have a moment when things weren't going quite... <laughs> as well as you know some of the some of the other clubs supporters do it may well give the team a g up but you can't have it both ways i'm very i'm very happy with them being nice and quiet this is the first time i've ever heard a manager inviting the, the crowd to have a moan at his men well i think i think to some extent football is a very very competitive game and a very competitive situation the people pay their money to let off steam and uh, i think uh, it's quite pleasant if you're a player to to hear people letting off steam and to have a moan because if they're very volatile and you do well, they get behind you. And, and I think professional footballers understand the situation that if they're not doing particularly well, that the crowd will have a go. 
So Andy Nelson, really quite surprising to hear a manager happy for his crowd to have a go at his players. But I still can't get over that being a goalless draw yesterday.